What up guys, Matt here, Acoustic Selection with another week of YouTube Church. Hope you've had a great week and God's done big things in your life. This week I want to talk about something that I've had in my mind a lot lately, and that is the two biggest obstacles or distractions that God, that is keeping us from relationship with God, that's keeping us from the life that God has desired for us to live, that is with a relationship with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The first one is just being busy or distracted. You know, I probably 10 years ago wouldn't have said this is one of the two biggest obstacles that I've seen, but these days I can say with certainty, just being busy, just being distracted can absolutely keep us from ever knowing a, a true relationship with God. We have our phones, our computers, the TV, the demands of this life at our job, um, whatever it is, that is constantly going for our attention. It's, it's requiring, demanding, and just expecting all of our attention. That we almost leave no room for God's Word and the Holy Spirit and the movement of God to come into our life and, and to stir up questions and, and to stir up the desire for a relationship or, or desire to have a, have a need for Him and, and to cling to Him. That we can quickly, anytime... We have the least bit of discomfort, the least bit of um, uncertainty, whatever. We can grab our phone. We can avoid talking to people. We can avoid going to church. We can, and we can scroll. We can look at pictures and stories and entertainment and all this stuff. So we never let ourselves even ask the true questions like, what is the meaning of life? What happens after we die? What's my purpose here? Getting distracted, guys, it's so easy for even us as Christians we have to constantly be aware if we want a true relationship with God that he truly desires for us, that is, that is the abundant life, like it says in John 10.10, 10, we have to really avoid being distracted. Again, I'm guilty of this as anybody. The second you're bored, the second some, you can just grab your phone, scroll through Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, uh, browse your, your latest stories, entertainment, YouTube, whatever it is. And this is really dangerous because I think sometimes it's in that downtime um, it's in the valley, it's in, it's in the slow times of life that God can speak to us, that we're looking for answers and we just have quiet time. And that's why, again, just to kind of I'll go off a tangent here, even prayer life is so important these days just to get quiet, kneel down in the closet, in your bedroom, no distractions, no phone, nothing around you, and just talk to God and, and let God speak to you and just ask him for direction and wisdom and clarity in your life. So being busy, being distracted is absolutely an obstacle I want you to be aware of, I want myself to be aware of, that can keep us from that relationship God wants us. The second one, and this is going to surprise some of y'all, is religion. My pastor talked about that this morning. Religion is something that keeps so many people away from the true God. A lot of people say, what do you mean? Isn't Christianity religion? It is in a sense, like you practice religious beliefs, but, but religion and the gospel are totally two separate things. I know many, many, many people that are religious that absolutely have no relationship with the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ at all. There's, the, there's religion and there's the gospel. My pastor came up with a little list. I'm going to go over a few of them with you. Religion says, I obey, therefore I am accepted. But the gospel says, I'm accepted, therefore I obey. Let's look at that one just real fast. We always try to earn God. Religion over here is let me let me let my good outweigh my bad. Let me do anything I can good to make me feel good. Hey God, I'm reading my Bible. God, I'm praying. Uh, God, I just gave to the poor. God, I gave tithes. God, I'm doing this. Look at what I'm doing. God, look. I hope I hope I'm accepted by you. That's what religion teaches. The gospel says Jesus Christ left the throne of heaven, died a death that you and I deserve for our sin debt, and accepted us. So because He did that, I'm going to obey. See the difference there. The second one, mo religion motivation is based on fear and insecurity. Oh my goodness, God, I'm, I'm so scared of God that I gotta, I hope I'm doing good enough and God to look and make sure you see, look at all I'm giving. Is, and and you're, you're just always uncertain about your life. Whereas the gospel motivation is based on grateful joy. You say, God, I, you've loved me so much. You've given me so much the cross. How can I know you more? How can I do more? How can I serve more? How can I give more? Look, you've already given everything to me, God. The least I can do is tell everybody else around that I see about you. The least I can do is serve you and give to you because look, it's, it's all nothing in comparison to what you've already done for me. Religion says I obey God in order to get things from God. 
Now, God, I'm going to need this job. I'm going to need this relationship. God, you know I need extra income and that lake house. And, and you know I'm asking for that. My wife and I can't have kids. And you know we want kids. So I'm going to do anything I can, God, because I want you to give this to us. That's what religion teaches. Do these rituals and let God bless you. The gospel says, I obey God to get God, to delight and resemble him. You say, God, I don't know what you have in store for me, but blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't know if you're going to give me that child, give me that job, give me that raise. But if you give me or if you don't, it doesn't matter. You've given me the greatest gift I could ever, even more than I could ever ask for through Jesus. When Religion says, when circumstances in my life go wrong, I'm angry at God or myself. Since I believe, like Job's friends, you know the story of Job in the Bible, anyone who is good deserves a comfortable life. Man, we could teach them this is a video in itself. If I do the work of God, if I'm giving my money, I'm giving my time, I'm reading my Bible. I'm going to have a comfortable, cushy life. That's what religion teaches. Because look, look how, look here, I got a little bit of bad, a whole lot of good. So give me this good, comfortable life. That couldn't be further from the truth, guys. The gospel says that when circumstances in my life go wrong, yeah, I struggle, but I know all my punishment fell on Jesus. And that while he may allow this for my training, he will exercise his fatherly love within my trial. That even though I'm uncomfortable, even though I'm hurting, you all know my, my situation since last May with autoimmune disease. I can tell you guys, let me diverse a second. I ache and hurt and I'm in pain every single day of my life. It's been such an obstacle that I pray and I cry and ask God, please remove this from me. Please take this away. I, I don't know why you're giving this to me. Why, why I'm trying to do your work. I'm trying to love others, do what you told me to do. But I'm hurting, I'm pain, I have aches and joint pain and hurts and, and throbbing and stuff all over me every single day. But you know what? I said, God, maybe you, wanted, maybe you wanted that to happen to slow down because I know you've already shown how much you love me. I know you said my very hairs in my head are numbered. I know you said surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So, so if I live another hundred years, if I live another one day, if I'm in pain or if I'm in complete just joy and greatness all the time. Either way, you've already proven your love. That's what the gospel says. You've proven it on the cross. There are so many of these guys. It says, when I, religion says, when I'm criticized, I'm furious or devastated because it's critical that I think of myself as a good person and threats to my self-image must be destroyed because I want people to see I'm a good person. That's what religion teaches. The gospel says, when I'm criticized, I struggle, but it's not critical for me to think of myself as a good person. My identity is not built on my record or performance, but on God's love for me in Christ. I can take criticism. You can be humble. You can not find joy in others falling. You can say, God, even though I see such bad things going on, I know I'm a sinner myself. I know I deserve your wrath, but you love me so much you sent Jesus. So who am I to judge this person or this person? Because I'm so glad you didn't judge me. You gave me that gift of Christ. So let me be as loving and serving as giving. As... And there's a whole list I can go on and on, guys, but but you see my point, my, my, my point is religion is totally different than the gospel. Do not, do not, whatever you do, think of, 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 of these good deeds or I go to church, I give to the poor as a relationship with Christ. It is absolutely not true. Now, most of the people that have, a, if you do have a good relationship with Christ, you'll give your money, you'll give your time, you'll serve the poor, you'll do all these things. But I can promise you, trust me when I say this, there are millions and millions and millions of people who think they are a Christian. They think they're going to heaven, and I promise you they are not. They don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They haven't put their trust in the finish, they haven't put their trust or faith in the finished work of the cross. They think their good deeds are outweighing their bads. I'm a pretty good person. I'm pretty good than you. I'm a little bit better than you, you, and you, so God probably is going to accept me and take me to heaven. Do not believe Satan's lie, guys. That is a lie straight from Satan. The only way we get to heaven is through the finished work and the blood shed on the cross from Jesus Christ. That's as clear as I know how to put it. When you put your trust in Jesus, you accept that gift God has given to you through Jesus. Then your salvation, the Holy Spirit comes inside you and you have a relationship with God. If you think you're going to do these good deeds and all these things that earn God's love, then Christ's death was in vain and you will... Man, I could preach about this all day. I see it happening so many times. The people, and we, we were distracted, and we think we just got to do enough good deeds and earn God's blessing. God, he loved you before you were even born. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. I give you verse after verse. And, and, and God, he loves you so much, he's already proven it. There's nothing else he can do more than Jesus Christ to prove to you how much he loved you. He bore our sin on that cross. So think about that today. Are you being busy and distracted? 
Are you letting your life rely on religion and rituals? Or are you trusting in the, tr in the, in the finished work of the Jesus Christ on that cross? God said, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life that no man come to the Father but by me. God committed his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's your Sunday YouTube church. Sometimes guys, messages are tough to talk about and I don't want to come across as a know-it-all, but, I, I, but, but, but this is something that's it's too important. It's too serious. We cannot just, just kind of breeze through life and hope, I hope, hope God looks down and thinks I've been good. It doesn't work that way. God has given us gift, this gift. We just have to take it. We have to receive it. A gift, it, there's a gift here. Let me, let me, let me, give, give, me, give me 30 more seconds. Let me diverse here a second. I saw somebody put on Instagram. It said, I love you. It had a picture of Christ. It says, I love you, but you're going to burn in hell. Just kidding. I love you, but actually, yeah, I am going to burn you. And I thought, how we've distorted Jesus Christ and his love. I thought, I told my wife, I said, that is... That is like my wife going in, in, in the kitchen and cooking like a 10-course meal. I have every single thing is appetizer, main course, desserts, every kind of food you can imagine prepared for me. And me walking in that kitchen and laying down and just starving to death. The gift is there. The food is made. Everything is right there for my taking, and I just choose to deny it. That's what that's like. It's like God doesn't send anybody to hell. It's just the opposite of that. He sent Jesus to give us the way to heaven. It's just a gift. You have to receive it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. It's pretty black and white, guys. Have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Have you put in your trust in him? Do you live your life in a posture that says, I rely on you for my salvation, for my needs, for everything? I'm going to pray for you, Father. Somebody, somebody needs to hear this message. Somebody needs to hear of your good news, and they've been trying to follow their, they've been trying to be good enough and earn your love and hope that they get to heaven, hope they earn your, 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 your love and your acceptance. But Father, it only comes through Jesus Christ. I pray today that you could touch some hearts, some guys, some girls, young, old, and just, 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 just show them, why open their heart and show them your word, what your word says, that the love you've shown them through Jesus Christ. Help us accept Christ every single day and live a life that's pleasing to him because he has loved us so much. I ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. God bless you.